In this video, let's take a look at the historical simulation approach for the purpose of estimating the value at risk (VAR) of a portfolio given the choice of confidence level and a given horizon. Please note that historical simulation approach falls into this camp of non-parametric approaches wherein we do not impose any distribution related assumption on the chosen random variable of interest. So depending on the model that you have devised for the purpose of estimating the VAR, your chosen random variable of interest can be let's say the future value of your portfolio. It can be for example the profit slash loss that you let's say were to realize over an upcoming period of time. It can be for example the return of your portfolio over an upcoming period of time. Okay, Irrespective of the random variable that you intend to work with, a non-parametric approach will not impose any distribution related assumption on your random variable. Instead, the non-parametric approach will let the empirical data guide you with respect to the distribution of your random variable. Okay, so we won't assume any distribution, we will let the empirical data guide us with respect to the distribution that we have to work with. Okay, then coming back to the historical simulation approach, let me assume that I have a portfolio with me and I am standing as of this point in time. It's the close of day capital T. I have numbered my days in this order, day 0, day 1, all the way till capital T. I am standing as of that point in time at which I have access to the closing levels of all those market variables to which my portfolio is sensitive to. Okay, So I have access to the market data, the relevant market data as of the close of this day but I don't have access to the relevant market data as of the close of day t plus 1. Okay, At this stage let's do this. Irrespective of the actual horizon that you have to work with for estimating your VAR, let's at the moment limit ourselves to finding the VAR for the chosen confidence but for a one day period for a one day horizon. Okay, We will scale this VAR, this one day VAR appropriately towards the end of this video to arrive at the VAR for the chosen horizon. Okay, So let me do this. Let me as my step one identify those market variables which my portfolio is sensitive to. Let me call those market variables as my risk factors. Okay, so let me prepare a list of risk factors like this. So my risk factors might include equity prices, my risk factors might include exchange rates and my risk factors might include interest rates and even credit spreads. Okay, if I were to go through this list of risk factors, then for some risk factors, the day on day changes okay the change in the risk factor between the close of one day and the close of the next day these changes are more appropriately expressed in terms of percentage changes you can think of these changes to be some kind of a relative change for example if i were to take a look at let's say this stock price s sub t it's the stock price of any given stock in my portfolio observed as of the close of any given day lowercase t. To find the change in this stock price between close of day t minus 1 and the close of day t, it's more appropriate that I work with the change, let's call it delta s, that divided by the starting level s. 
okay so let me you know think of this change to be a percentage change or for that matter let's say a relative change okay in your list you might also have risk factors for which changes from one day to the next are more appropriately expressed in actual changes so for these risk factors examples are interest rates and credit spreads okay so the change in the interest rate between close of day t minus 1 and close of day t would be calculated something like this okay so let me do this let me first of all record the market data for all my identified risk factors for all these days which I have drawn here right from day 0 till day capital T let me convert this market data which is pertaining to the levels of these risk factors to changes in risk factors from one day to the next okay all I'm asking you to do is to design these many scenarios okay so in general if I want to let's say get the scenario pertaining to day lowercase t this can be any day from day 1 to day capital T all I'm asking you to do is to take the recorded levels of your risk factors and calculate for me the change in these risk factors between end of day t minus 1 and end of day t please do take note that the changes have to be expressed as per the type of the risk factor for these guys in percentage form for these guys in the form of actual changes okay so for day lowercase t my scenario would look something like this my scenario is telling me that the equity level changed by this much percentage amount the exchange rate changed by this much percentage amount the interest rate and the credit spread they changed by these much actual amounts okay this is the definition of the scenario pertaining to day lowercase t I want you to get these scenarios for all these days right from day 1 till day capital T okay once you have all these scenarios let's move on to step 2 step 2 is about producing the values of your portfolio as of the close of day t plus 1 let me call the value of my portfolio as of the close of t plus 1 to be v sub t plus 1 and we have to work out the values of our portfolio for all these t scenarios applied one by one okay so for example in general if i were to apply the scenario corresponding to day t what will i do I will take the levels of my risk factors as observed as of the close of day capital T and I'll apply to these levels of my risk factors changes that happened on the day lowercase t. Okay, so that's what I have done here. See, as of day capital T, this was my equity level. I take this equity level and I multiply it with 1 plus the percentage change in my equity level on day lowercase t. So 1 plus this guy is what? It's st over st minus 1. That's what I have done here. See? And then the exchange rate start with the level as of the close of capital T. Multiply it with 1 plus this guy and that is this. Interest rate start with the level as of the close of capital T plus apply to this the actual change that happened over the chosen day lowercase t and this is what happened on this day okay and the similar thing applies to credit spread also once you have the bumped or shocked values of your risk factors pass these bumped values into your valuation model mathematically speaking I have written it as some kind of a function here right pass these bumped values into your math into your valuation model and what comes out is the value of your portfolio as of the close of day t plus 1 and for 
the that particular scenario which you are working with okay so in the end if you were to repeat this exercise for all scenarios right from day 1 till day capital T you will have with you these many values of your portfolio okay these many simulated values for your portfolio okay then in step 3 all you have to do is number 1 you have to calculate the loss that you will be realizing given a value of your portfolio at a future point in time loss will be calculated as the initial value which is the value as of the close of capital T minus the final value which is V at T plus 1 corresponding to a given scenario okay so if you have these many values of your future portfolio you will have the same number of losses also okay for every future portfolio value you can calculate a loss sort all these losses in increasing order and once you have the sorted values with you very simply in step 4 calculate your VAR and expected shortfall at your chosen level of confidence for VAR all you have to do is you have to start from the extreme right of your sorted series of losses move to the left and stop at the point where you have accumulated a total probability mass of alpha your level of significance so alpha is equal to 1 minus C okay what point would accumulate a total of alpha it will be the T alpha th point counted from the right these many observations and alpha is the level of significance okay so T alpha th observation counted from the right is your VAR if I were to take all those losses which are strictly greater than this observation and find a simple average of those losses you have with you the expected shortfall at the chosen level of confidence okay if you remember in the beginning of this video I had said that let's stick to a daily horizon to work with and we'll scale the number which we get to arrive at the risk measure for our chosen horizon so if my horizon is these many days then the VAR at confidence level C and horizon H can be arrived at by starting with the VAR at confidence C and horizon one day and multiplying it with the square root of H. Similarly, the expected shortfall for a horizon H days is simply the expected shortfall confidence C horizon one day that times square root of H. Please note that these scaling rules they only apply if you can defend the IID assumption okay the independent and identically distributed assumption okay so if your losses over any given day in this H day period if your losses are IID then you can very well use this time scaling rule okay then please note a couple of quick points before we end this video many a times you will see yourself working with market variables that are expressed in the form of term structures market variables which have term structures associated with them are interest rates credit spreads and even at the money implied volatilities okay so when you see yourself working with term structures you will have to do some kind of a linear interpolation to arrive at the appropriate value of the market variable that needs to be inserted into the valuation model okay so for example if let's say I am working with an interest rate term structure essentially what it means is that you have a number of concrete tenors corresponding to which you have interest rates for example if the scenario definition tells you that the six month interest rate changed by 10 bips 12 month interest rate changed by 8 bips and you have a position which is sensitive to the nine month interest rate you will have to linearly interpolate and find out the shift that needs to be applied to the nine month interest rate okay so linear interpolation in this particular example 
will tell you that the 9 month interest rate has to be bumped by 9 bits. Okay. One last point to note is that recently speaking in the last few years we have seen a regulatory push towards stressed risk measures. Okay. So it, while computing a stressed risk measure the same procedure that we have just now outlined would apply. It is just that the period, the historical period that we use to design our scenarios will not be the recent most historical period. Okay? Instead, we will be working with market data and hence scenario definitions which come from a 250 day stressed period. When I say stressed, I am talking about that period which is particularly stressful for the portfolio which you are sitting on. Okay, So the choice of the stressed period depends on the portfolio for which the stressed VAR or stressed ES has to be calculated. So let's do this. Let's combine the information about our portfolio composition with the market data slash the shocks which come from a 250 day stressed period. Let us use the same sequence of steps that we outlined in this particular video and what we have in the end then will be a stressed war and a stressed expected shortfall. Okay. So this video was about understanding the historical simulation approach for the purpose of estimating the VAR and the expected shortfall.